that's supposed to be here. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the, uh, the day, uh, the same day, the legislature has completed their work on the extraordinary session uh, bills. And uh, we are together today to talk, and each, each one of the folks behind me will also speak. But uh, I'll just start off by saying the, um, the will of the people has uh, been officially um, been ignored by the legislature. Uh, their actions last night, I understand that they made some superficial changes of things, but their, their actions last night absolutely um, takes us back to November 6th. And the fact of the matter is that uh, the four of us uh, won those races, and the people of Wisconsin expect uh, better from us uh, as, as, as leaders and leaders in the legislature than to pit people against each other. And um, I can tell the, the I, I do believe that Wisconsin uh, should be embarrassed by this, by this activity. I've talked to many, many Republican leaders, and, uh, um, and you've seen media reports of Republican leaders from the past and the present that uh, are talking about this being uh, an embarrassment for the state. It's a wrong thing. And, I, and I'm just here to tell you today that it was the wrong step. Uh, from, from here on out, we move to the, uh, the governor and his, his action on this budget, but uh, on, the, on these pieces of legislation. But the, uh, uh, I am very concerned that the 2.6 million people that voted and, and they represent the rest of the people of Wisconsin uh, did not have their voices heard because of the actions of the, uh, of the legislature over the past few days that, that ended up this, late this morning, of course. Uh, in the middle of the night, early morning, without very, with very little public input to, uh, uh, to enact this historically um, improper legislation. So I'll ask uh, Josh Call next to make some comments. Josh. Um, I just want to, first of all, agree with what Governor-elect Evers said. Um, it's clear that the Wisconsin State Legislature is disregarding the vote of Wisconsinites in the elections that we recently had for governor uh, and for attorney general. One of the central issues in the AG's race and in the governor's race was whether Wisconsin should withdraw from a lawsuit that's seeking to invalidate the Affordable Care Act, a suit which, if it's successful, would eliminate protections for people with a pre-existing condition and would eliminate the guarantee that young adults can remain in their parents' coverage until they turn 26. At no point, in the election process, did anybody say the legislature might change the process so that the new governor may not be able to direct the attorney general to withdraw from that lawsuit? Uh, but now the legislature has passed legislation that gives itself that power and takes it away from Governor-elect Evers. Uh, for generations in this country, when elections have happened, full power has been transferred to the new leadership. The legislature here has decided that it knows better not only than the way we've been doing things recently, but then the way we have done things for generations. And that is unacceptable. Uh, I want to encourage Wisconsinites to continue speaking up. We have seen people stand up against this already. There have been people who've gone to the Capitol. I want to encourage people to continue speaking up, to let Governor Walker know how you feel about this legislation, and no matter what happens with Governor Walker, to keep speaking out about this. It's no accident that this bill was only released on a Friday afternoon uh, and that this has moved through the legislative process as quickly as possible. You know, there are cliches we hear about, about things being done behind closed doors in the middle of the night. In this case, it is, this was literally done behind closed doors in the middle of the night. The people of Wisconsin deserve much better than this, so please make your voices heard. Thank you, everybody. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, um, Lieutenant Governor-elect uh, Mandela Barnes. Thank you. Uh, I want to first start out by saying, or I should say echoing the statements of both the governor-elect and attorney general-elect. Uh, the transfer of power should be both peaceful as well as diplomatic, and yesterday devolved into neither. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the leaders in the legislature failed to listen, uh, again, to the will of the voters, to the will of the voting people, and in addition uh, to drawing maps that favor their own political party, they want to write the rules specifically in the interest of a political party. Uh, governing must happen, not politics. Uh, that's what we saw last night. That's what 
whoever stayed awake saw last night. Uh, many people uh, woke up to the news, uh, unfortunately, uh, of what happened. But this is a trend. We saw it in North Carolina. It's also happening in Michigan as we speak. It's happening here in Wisconsin. It's a very dangerous way to govern. Uh, you know, when you look at the way the maps are drawn, unfortunately, uh, you know, we had, excuse me, Assembly Democrats had 53 percent of the vote to Republicans 46 percent of the vote. This is, seems to be some sort of overcompensation for poor electoral performance. Uh, the fact is they still came away with more seats because they have rigged the rules once and they have demonstrated that they will continue to rig the rules as long as they can. Uh, they have one interest and that seems to be just to consolidate and maintain power. I just uh, left the new legislator orientation. The new members in the Senate and in the Assembly, uh, both sides, they expressed their willingness, their want to work collaboratively, to work together in good faith. Now we just need their senior members to share that same commitment. Uh, we will still advance, we will still work. Uh, as we stated before, as Tony said when he first got elected, he wants to work across the aisle. He wants to make sure that we are doing things together in the interests of Wisconsin. My challenge still remains to leaders in the legislature, to the governor who still has a chance to veto this piece of legislation. This, case, this is the 12th month of the year. We're never in session at this point in time. And to be in an extraordinary session, uh, to take away power from a branch of government, uh, cannot be less, or excuse me, cannot be more unfortunate. So the governor still has an opportunity to say no. And we're calling on him to do the right thing. Uh, and with that being said, I would like to introduce Treasurer elect Sarah Galuski. Thank you. Thank you. I just uh, want to echo what has been said earlier with regards to what is happening with Wisconsin and the democracy, uh, specifically with the attack with the governor and with the AG. Um, as the treasurer-elect, I've seen this earlier this year where they tried to remove the state treasurer from our Constitution. And they did this with two legislative sessions. And when they actually went to the people of Wisconsin to say, do you want to remove your state treasurer? 62% said, absolutely not. And what I think is so appalling is that if you would ask the people of Wisconsin, do you want to remove the executive powers that have been given to the attorney general, that have been written into the Constitution for the governor and the lieutenant governor, the people of Wisconsin would say, absolutely not. And you know what? They deserve better than the politics that's being played today. So we must encourage all Wisconsinites to talk to Governor Walker, because Governor Walker actually can stop this right now. I mean, this is a waste of time, money, and energy. Let's stop it. Let's encourage Governor Walker to just put this to an end so we can continue to be a democratic state that we're proud of. Wisconsin deserves better. Thank you. Any questions? Governor Leiters, are you going to personally communicate with Governor Walker your displeasure and your desire for him to give a veto a serious consideration? Yes. And when will that happen, do you imagine? So what's the time frame here? Well, I, soon. I mean, I, I'm not sure the budget or the bill has, the bills have been actually formally been written and, and, and presented to the governor. But it, as soon as that happens, we'll be, we, we will be in communication with them. Are you going to file a lawsuit? Pardon me? Are you going to file a lawsuit? Going, well, our, our efforts now is making sure the people of Wisconsin uh, communicate directly to the governor and talk to, and, and talk to him and his staff in a way that would convince him that uh, he needs to, he needs to change his thinking because r right now he seems to be thinking that uh, I seem to be hearing that he's going to sign it. So we need to have people reach out to the governor Walker and then we'll take if the next step needs to happen, all issues are on the table whether it's litigation or other issues. We are exploring anything to make sure that this legislation is not. Get into uh, get into practice. Speaker Voss says he's not heard from you that you've done all your negotiating through the news. I'm not sure what in the world that means. <laughs> he, he, to be honest with you, he he never asked me uh, to negotiate be, be, to talk to me about this legislation to begin with. So to to accuse me of negotiating through the media, when. It would have been great to find out exactly what his plans were to begin with. Then, then we, we, they could have a conversation. So uh, yes, I, I reject that because, frankly, I didn't know what they were going to be proposing to begin with. Can I speak to that as well? I just want to speak to the Speaker Voss question. Uh, this, this bill was released late on an afternoon of a, of a Friday. There was no discussion, for example, about uh, reducing the powers of the Attorney General before this bill was released. I believe Senate Majority Leader Fitzgerald at one point 
uh, mentioned something about the Solicitor General's office. But what was contained in this bill, by and large, was a surprise. Um, you know, Speaker Va Voss and Senate Majority Leader Fitzgerald made comments about what the extraordinary session would be about before this happened, and very little of what actually happened was discussed. And then this bill was pushed uh, as quickly as possible through the legislative process. And again, literally was revised in the middle of the night behind closed doors. And, and to think about the fact that we need to negotiate, uh, even though there was nothing for me to negotiate around because I didn't know what the hell they're going to do, but to, th to, think, to think that we should be negotiating around the, the, the will of 2.6 million people in the state of Wisconsin, I think, I think that's, uh, that's a difficult thing for me to accept also. And, and as governor-elect, it would be safe to assume that if it was okay for the last eight years, that it should be, at least be good enough for the next four years. I'm sorry, can you start off? Well, I, I don't view this, I, I view this, what was passed is, as a, frankly, a hot mess, and together, all of it is, uh, I think, a dangerous precedent, that included. Essentially, what they've done is made WIDA, uh, WIDEC uh, uh, an arm of the legislature and has removed it from the executive, uh, executive branch. I, I don't think, I don't think um, the people of Wisconsin expect me to have, like, a nine-month, uh, a training period in order to make sure that I can figure out how to, to uh, work on economic development in the state of Wisconsin. How would this impact the response? It doesn't impact anything as it relates to me except for the fact that I believe in order for us to work productively with Foxconn, we have to have somebody that's the head of that agency, no matter if it's WEDEC or something else, that's not the issue here, that is a governor appointee. And I have to believe that the, and you know, I, I've seen uh, documents and, and, and from business leaders across the state that are saying, we need to have, if we, we want to have CEOs of companies to be interacting with state government, that, that economic development has to begin with the governor of the state, not, not the legislature. And so I, I, it's bad policy, but I have to reiterate, you know, we could focus on that issue, but the whole thing's a mess. And so I, my belief is that the people of Wisconsin have spoken and that this collective piece of legislation, the three bills that were passed, are a repudiation of that. And I want to follow up on JR's question from before about working together. Uh, all four of us have been committed to working together with the legislature. We have talked about it repeatedly. Uh, and we want to work on the real issues that are facing Wisconsinites. There are serious challenges that we face that need to be addressed. You know, Governor-elect Ebers has talked about the roads and about health care and about education. I think it is critical that we address our opioid epidemic and our growing meth problem, that we get back to being serious about enforcing our environmental laws, that we do more on school safety. There are a lot of important issues that we have been talking about working together with the legislature on. What the legislature has been focused on is not solving problems for Wisconsinites. It is about giving themselves more power. They are focused on their own power and taking it away, not just, by the way, from executive branch officers, but from the people of Wisconsin who went out and voted in record numbers in this election, and they are now trying to undermine the results of that election. Uh, can you? I, I don't know. So, the bill allocates all your power to go to the power of Tony to tell you to drop the loss of the local care act, right? Can you basically kill the state participation by directing the employees just don't participate? But filing things, walk away. That's not how I approach things. I approach things in good faith and with an, effort, with an interest in doing the right thing for the people of Wisconsin. If you're involved in a lawsuit, you're involved in a lawsuit. You know, I, I was clear and have repeatedly been clear. Uh, that the AG's role, at least under the structure that we have currently, depending on what happens with this bill, is to defend the state in litigation, even if the AG disagrees with the policy matter. I talked about defending uh, the, re the redistricting process in this state, even though my personal view is that we should have a nonpartisan redistricting process. 
But the legislature has just ignored all that and taken action uh, without, by the way, any consultation, I think, with anybody here about uh, what should happen going forward. Could you break those spaces? Um, Could you start talking about that reinforcement care act that they don't need to So it, <laughs> the, the state, you know, we don't want the state taking inconsistent uh, legal positions at the same time. But, but the bottom line here is uh, this was a central issue in this year's elections, uh, including the election for governor. Um, and the legislature is trying to put its judgment in place of the judgment of the voters of Wisconsin, and that is right. fundamentally not how the process should be working in any functioning democracy. Well, again, I, I believe that should be uh, the governor's uh, decision. Uh, he's the executive of the state of Wisconsin. But again, that is one piece out of many. We started out with 141 pages. I have no idea what it is now. It could be more or less. But the bottom line is these things were put in place to scale back the, uh, the vote and the will of the people that happened on November 6th. It's pretty clear. So we're looking forward to making sure that the people of Wisconsin connect with the governor, uh, the present governor, and encourage him to veto this bill. Thank right. you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.